Hello, and welcome to another episode of Rewind and Play. Considering that m my most successful videos to date have been about the Switch, this week's video will basically be my general thoughts on the present and future of the system. Right off the bat, I have to tell you that I haven't gotten my hands on the machine myself yet, and this is for two reasons. First off, I'm unemployed at the moment, so I have to prioritize expenses, nor do I have particularly much time to spend on playing games. Second is the system's flaws, which I'd like to see resolved before I commit. And that's where I'm going to start this episode. Since the console's launch, people have reported an ever-growing range of problems, ranging from controllers desyncing, ducks scratching screens, consoles shrieking, and ridiculously poor Wi-Fi connections. As of yet, it's unclear how common these flaws are, nor do we know the exact reason for several of them. What I can say is, however, that none of these problems on their own are likely to have any significant impact on Switch sales. At least, if Nintendo play their cards right, if they treat customers with respect and actually do something about the problems, all of these issues will be forgotten and forgiven in a few months' time. Let's not forget the epidemic of Red Ring of Deaths on early Xbox 360s. Microsoft managed to ride that one out through excellent customer service and hardware revisions. The fact of the matter is that this has been a tremendously successful console launch. Breath of the Wild has received overwhelmingly good reviews while Snipper Clips has also proven to be well appreciated by critics and gamers alike. The task at hand is to maintain the momentum. As a very software-centric person, I think that this year's E3 will make or break the system, because that's really the main argument that the naysayers have right now, and it's really the one that needs to be addressed most urgently. Don't get me wrong, Zelda, Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, Xenoblade 2, Snipperclips, and ARMS all seem to be excellent games. At E3, we're very likely to see footage from Fire Emblem Heroes, No More Heroes 3. Reggie's also confirmed that, that a new Super Smash Bros. game is in the works, as well as hinting towards a new Metroid game being announced this year. That bodes really well in terms of exclusive content. However, the elephant in the room is a matter of third-party support. So far, we don't know of particularly many big hitters coming out for the system, with the system's USP being the ability to play home console games on the go. The system really will need those high-profile multi-platform games to sell well. If we'll see this year's Call of Duty, Star Wars Battlefront, Need for Speed and Madden on the system, then I believe that the Switch will be virtually untouchable. If, however, a situation arises where, yet again, multi-platform games coming to the Switch becomes the exception rather than the rule, then Nintendo are in a situation I don't really know how they can get out of. So what's the reason for the lack of AAA support so far? We can only speculate, but my theory is that third-party publishers want to see how the system does before they commit. Let's not forget, multi-platform games usually sold really quite terribly on the Wii U. As an example, the Wii U version of a Splinter Cell only made out 2% of total sales for that game. So for those of you who already own a Switch, I highly recommend for you to pick up the third-party games that actually do come out. Vote with your wallet and support the system that you like. Another part of this is of course that publishers want to release their games for all systems at once. So publishers are not likely to port games that have already come out some time ago for the 
for other systems. The third and final subject I want to cover today is the matter of hardware revisions. It's a somewhat polarizing fact, but Nintendo have a tradition of releasing multiple versions of their portable consoles, both in terms of size and performance. The current Switch is quite an excellent size as a console to bring on a holiday or on your commute to work, but it's not small enough for people to stick it in their pocket and carry around on it at all times. So I believe that down the line we will see a Switch Mini. A considerable part of the Switch's power consumption is the screen itself. From what I've read online, some people have managed to make battery run the system for four hours on Zelda just by turning the brightness all the way down. So logically, a smaller system with a smaller screen should have a longer battery life. In lot. terms of incremental updates, we can only speculate. This is a fairly new and experimental approach from console manufacturers. We must remember that Nintendo aren't new to this. One might say that they were first saw the gate with the new 3DS and perhaps even N64 expansion pack. I see three main factors that will decide whether Nintendo commit to revising the Switch down the line or not. First off is how well the Switch does overall. If the Switch does poorly, then there will be no reason to split the fan base, nor will there be any point of wasting so much resources on R&D. The second factor is whether Nintendo considered the new 3DS a worthwhile investment. I'm not the right person to judge that at all. And of course, finally, we have the performance of the PS4 Pro and Project Scorpio. If those systems prove worthwhile for both Sony and Microsoft, then Nintendo are likely to join that bandwagon. The bottom line is that if Nintendo managed to prevent the quality issues from tainting the Switch's name, if they make sure that the Switch gets a steady stream of quality software from the start, from first, second and third party developers, then they're golden. On the flip side, image and word of mouth are king. If the Switch becomes known for, for poor quality and software draughts, then the sales might dry up insanely quickly. So those were my thoughts on the Switch so far. Do you agree? Let me hear in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next week, have a good day.